And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my two good brothers as always. We have the 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 man who is currently campaigning to have his own airship. And what better known as Good Brother Ash. And we have the we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadaria Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, Good Brother Xanatrix. We are back after after a long sent a long series of arguments over over wizards, and because we are masochists, we're here discussing another <laughs> another casting class for um for for level up five e. Thankfully, this one will not have as will not be as vanilla because once again we're t because this time we're talking about bards now for as long as for as long as I can remember bards have kind have kind of been the whipping boy um exemplified by the numerous dead bards in darkness rising <laughs> <laughs> and the and the and have and the fact that you have to have some dedication to bring 50 copies of your character sheet. Yeah. Oh. In more modern times, I would say that uh, that bards are known for three things. Being the face of parties, the guy who fucks things, and, uh, well, the third one's a little special in most cases because... Each bard plays their performances differently amongst mm -hmm. players, but it all ends up being tavern songs. I'd, yeah, and the now um, ostensibly the ostensibly the bard is a conversion of the unit unit musician troupe. You know the you know things like the drummer boy or the tr or the trumpet guy that you would see in armies. That's supposed yeah, the, to grant boost to the attached unit. The bugler. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, the other part is trying to do the hero figure that you that you see um, in a lot of in a lot of folk tales in um, in Europe, just as a whole. Although, especially um, e especially Eastern Euro Europe, um, a lot a lot of st a lot of st and a lot of um, st tales in w in Wales, um, and I'd say in other cases the Finnish hero god Vilniamonian. Vion which I know I fucked up the pronunciation. Most likely. Um, I'm going. To, I'm going to put this in the in the text for you guys. Let's see if any of you can get it better. Okay, let's look at this. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Unnecessary umlauts. I love you, Finland. Yeah. Um. Well, we love their metal. <laughs> that's that's a that's a good point. Um. Vinylmonium is the best I've got. Yeah. Um. Eastern European languages are hard mode. <laughs> um. It's Vinylmonium. Now, and of course, of course, the of course the um, interpretation that a lot of people are going to be more familiar with is is um the menstru is the menstrual the tr the troubadour. the troubadour yeah the troubadour um um so in troubadours some... were much more traveling and much more uh, much more uh they they had more adventurousness whereas minstrels usually stayed in one yeah. place um. I'd say I'd say I'd say in, in some interpretations your um, harlequins also also qualify. Um, what do those knife-eared pricks have to do with anything? <laughs> um, aside from being aggressively French. No, 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 no. That's only one type of harlequin. Those that are serving Shigorak himself. Of course, Shagarak is probably one of my favorite gods in that universe. Mm -hmm. But, of but of course, and of course, there's the there's um there's been there's been uh, there's been other inter there's been other interpretations over the years um 
And I, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up the one of the one of the um, venerable names in PC role playing, a bard's tale. Of course. Um, I, I tend to think that the whole adventurer swashbuckler uh, Errol Flynn combined with the the plucky traveling troubadour image that we've gotten from the bard comes from some historical accounts of how troubadours and minstrels were actually used as spies. I can I can certainly I can certainly see that and given given some of the inspirations of in say Dragon Age that's clearly where they were drawing from when it came to having Leliana as someone who had received bardic training. Leliana best girl anybody else can fucking fight me. Although oddly enough the the character who I've who I've always seen in in Dragon Age that best exemplifies the bard archetype is not necessarily Leliana but um Varric Varric's pretty good. Which every time I say that, I usually have somebody saying, "But Varric doesn't play any instruments." No, so he what? no, he doesn't. But he is no less of a storyteller. Um, exactly, still a performer. And since I've since I've been listening to a graphic audio version of Stormlight Archive, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the King's Wit, <laughs> who um. He can certainly be helpful, but there's a but he draw but he's right on the line between help between someone you want to thank for their for their help and someone you want to strangle. He's, they have help, and then they have help. Um, I'd say I'd say the I'd say the only other person I who would be who would be a, who would be um, applicable in that in that matter, um, in a in a similar but different manner is Lopin, but <laughs> <laughs> that's because. Lopin is the Lopin is the is the fr the friend who you know is loyal but still manages to find new and interesting ways to be an annoying idiot. With friends like him, who needs enemies? <laughs> um. Although when it comes to Bridge Four, Rock is best boy. <laughs> At the very least, he's best cook. Acknowledged. <laughs> And I'm not saying that because he because he is a he is a giant like you and I. Although that doesn't. I I, I was going to say while that isn't a primary point, I'm sure it has points in your favor. Well, I it doesn't uh, hurt his chances, at least. Yeah. Um. But when it comes but when it comes to the bard, it's can it's kind of been relegated to the to the. Less serious class, the people who want to be wacky. Um, that chaotic neutral guy, you all know him. You've <laughs> all had to deal with him. Um, I'm gonna steal from the captain of the guards in broad daylight with everyone looking at me. Why? I'm pr I'm or in one in one case, um, someone's slapping a guard with a dead fish. Yes, a good way to get thrown into the stockade. <laughs> um. The uh, the attempt when it comes to the bard is to be a jack of all trades, master of none. But I've I've argued that the problem the problem with doing that in, in a game like D and D is it's not really built for it. You end up with something that doesn't do any of the things that it does as well as those that are specialized. Yeah, that's the that's the reason why I, that's the reason why I've harped because the bard is somewhat analogous to. The, to the ranger and the early monk, um, in this in the sense that in the sense that they were that they were bashing to, that they were bashing together um, sev several archetypes, but not but still but being outstripped by by the by the single arch by the single archetype people far too yeah. much. Like they didn't ha they didn't have anything to add as aside from th aside from things other classes could already do. Um, yeah. And now, yeah, now, yeah, and of course, of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the Tol the Tolkien factor when it comes to bards. I mean, for fuck's sake, the Hobbit had a character named Bard. <laughs> yeah, and then of course, uh, would would you would you say that some that some element of the Rangers was was bardic at times. I know that they are called the rangers and they primarily were a ranger archetype. But 
it's very straddling the line kind of thing. It's one of those yeah. cases where I, I could I could see a legitimate argument both ways. Yeah. Um. Definitely in combat, they were rangers through and through, but. Yeah. Um. And, and of course, of now with A D and D, the bard was jank, like full on Slav, full on Slavic levels of jank. So, so he was he was good at squat and smoke and drink vodka <laughs> and shoot AK. Ugh. Knowing our knowing our luck, it's the AK is replaced with a Saiga twelve. Either way, that's still a good gun. <laughs> or no, I was gonna make I was gonna make a I was gonna make a bullpup joke using a styrog, but no, the problem is the styrog doesn't suck. It's just something you can't use if depending on how depending on your um, dexterity. Well, uh, fuck you, unbullpups your stair. <laughs> um, so you started out as a fighter, and between levels five and eight. You had to dual class over to the thief. Then, after reaching fifth level as a thief, and before you reached level nine, you had to dual class again to the druid. But you didn't get druid abilities; you got bard abilities as a subclass of druid. Um. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, what? Though even now, I even now I have to ask the question: Why the hell is the druid involved in this? <laughs> the two could not be any further apart from each other. They could. Probably, I might actually be able to to shed some light on this, especially given that I have AD and D, uh, the specifically the idols, uh, the idol, the idol cover handbook, opened in front of me. It's the there's often been this connection. I I thought it so delightful that you two opened this up with like the bar, the connections between the ranger and the bar, because I feel like the bar does have this sort of almost hippie esque connection with nature or it's insinuated this connection with nature the idea that there's you know the the magic that birth creation is still might still hang in the air and it could still be tapped into and the idea that a druidic path might be needed to a, an idea a path which led you to understand nature in the natural world might be required to understand how this magic might be best utilized but couldn't it actually give you access to it. It was one step on the path to actually be able to express and use this magic, the suggestive abilities and the various uh, the various charm effects that first edition bards could employ. I think this was I, so. I think there is a there is sort of a connection there, amusing though it may be, and it's sort of the first instance of of Gary basically taking you or. Maybe not the first instance, but the first time it was really written into the rulebook. Like, listen, classes are these things, which these overlays, which encompass sets of mechanical abilities. And if you want to understand, like, th this is a, a character who becomes a bard is traipsing through these different classes because as a means of forming what their eventual first character is going to what their character is eventually going to work w with it's just that the you know, first level bard had to be 13th level or whatever have you um speaking metaphorically not literally in this instance i would i now i would argue that the the i think the intent and not and i say intent not execution was to lean into the nor to the nordic bard and the celtic skald um like say the Kel the Celts of Ga the Celts of Gaul, um, whose dru whose druids refused to write anything down. Um, it was all it was all spoken uh spoken histories. Yeah, and e but the but um that's just that's with the AD and D first edition bard and understandably it was it didn't get used a whole lot from from what from what I've been from accounts that I've get that I've gathered over the years and my own experiences nobody picked even when I ru even when I run AD and AD and D one one e during old during old school nights nobody picks bard um well you got to get good enough stats that's that alone is gonna well you're ju you're jump out. you're jump no. you're jumping between three between three different classes Mm -hmm. That's imme that's immediately 
that's immediately going to be unappealing. Um, the AD and D Second Edition Bard, what was a ha was a hack of the at the time Thief, nowadays Rogue, which is a, which is a much better move in my opinion. <clears throat> they be, um they had most of the same abilities as a Thief, though they weren't as they weren't as good as those abilities as a Thief. They did get Bardic Music, which is exclusive to them. They were slightly better at combat than a thief, and they had a few mage spells that they could br that they could bring up. Um, the bard in Dark Sun was more focused on intrigue and poison making rather than throwing bluffs. Which Dark Sun Dark Sun is awesome. More peop more people need to run Dark Sun. Um, it still it still remains one of my favorite um, campaign settings from the. AD and D Second Edition era, um, that and um, Al Qadim. But I'd say I'd say the I'd say the Bard as the uh, as the weak as the weakling or the wacky class started with um, vanilla Third Edition. Definitely, um, and not exactly a weakling class, but not a, a frontline fighter. More of a, or at least attempted to be. A utility class, mostly, mm -hmm. with some, and like you said, the, the jack of all trades attempt was tried even further there, until people realized that with all the easy charisma feats and easy charisma based uh, class skills they got, etc., you could make them super effective at the social game. Yeah. Now. That, now uh, that has the caveat of if you're approaching Bard as um, vanilla, because yeah. Now they now the thing is, like I said, originally Bards were just a ha were just a ha in um in AD and D second they were a hack of thieves because when thieves became rogues with third edition, um Bards ended up becoming their ended up becoming their own thing ent entirely, um. And if you're if you're using if you're using just the just the three e um book three players handbook alone, they're pretty low tier, but they got a lot of love in splat books over the years, and especially after um three became three point five. And especially especially since originally their spell list was this big was this big kit bash of the wizard and cleric lists. But but much like we've talked about with other times with kit bashing happens, you tend to have the drawbacks of both and the benefits of neither. Um, if you're using the t if you're using the gamesologist tier system, um, they if you're playing core only, um, bards are tier four. If you're you if you're optimizing bards, they're tier three, which is not is not too shabby. Um, of course, um, there are so there are some abilities that, in the right hands, were just outright broken. Looking at you, Bardic knowledge. <laughs> by mid by mid levels, you by mid levels that was auto win on every knowledge check ever. <laughs> um, and ja and Jack of all trades let them not only be not only be a decent skill monkey. Jack of all trades with decent optimization could make you the only skill monkey anyone's ever going to need. Yep, the rogue started at that point. If you saw a bard who was going jack of all trades, the rogues started going. Y you're the skill monkey now. I'm gonna go crit fishing and pulled out their fishing pole. Yeah. Um, plus, even a half caster in the three E days was still a caster and. Well, this was when Cook had it had a massive, massive boner for for giving everything to casters. <laughs> yes, back when Wizard was um sometimes the biggest skill monkey because of all those fun utility spells. Let's not let's we've already talked about Codzilla as well, so let's not delve into that too. Um, <laughs> let's not, let's not delve into the fact that both of those casters could literally just wreck an entire enemy can counter themselves. Yeah. Um I'm sure we'll go more into that when we get to the cleric. Yeah. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. Now, Pathfinder had... It, I consider Pathfinder's bard to be vastly superior to 3.5's bard. Whereas, whereas the... Whereas the... Th as the D&D third bard is tier 4, um, 
the bottom for um, Pathfinder's Bard is tier 3. Um, you can, one of the one of the big things is the fact that Inspire Courage had a much better rate of pr rate of progression. Um, cuz originally it was 8th level and then every 6 levels after that. Um, whereas with Pathfinder's Bard, they got it at 5th level and every 6 levels after that it would get better. Also, um, when it came to bardic music, they no longer had to have performs um, trained. Now, granted, there's no reason why you would want to not be trained and untrained in perform, unless you're dipping. But if, but um, you'd have to be a very brave man to be to be using bard as a dip class. Um, and of course, in of course, once you once you put splat into the mix, they got even better. And a optimized bard, I'd say, is tier two. Espe especially, si especially since, unlike the 3.5 splat for bards, Pathfinder bard splat, especially the spells that they would get, were unique to them instead of just getting handoffs from wizards. They all they also got masterpieces, which could be a kind of kind a kind of um, ritual magic. You trade a spell known to get additional performance options, which requires specific type types of instruments to perform, which which I perfectly enjoy. Um, and of course, one of the one of the um, most blatant masterpieces was Pageant of the Peacock, which lets you use bluff for any intelligence-based skill. You could also get it pretty early. <laughs> So for those who want to literally be a know-it-all. Um, Sounds like my type of skill. Um, now Pathfinder 2nd Edition has, th has them have a, as a full caster with, um, with a spell list called Occult for some weird reason. Um, a lot of the bardic performances have been made into um, composition cantrips. And while while they're not exactly the jack of all trades, they are a jack of a lot of trades because they get a lot of skills at the at the start. Um, they get a they get trained in occultism, performance, and four and four more plus their plus a number of um, skills equal to their intelligence mod. And they which, can, and depending which if you're going to play play a Pathfinder bard, you're probably going to yeah. dump into int. Mm-hmm. Int and Charisma are probably where you're going to be dump dumping everything. Um, yep. Fourth edition, when that came around, the Bard wasn't in there initially. And for those who remember the Zeitgeist campaign, that was Lady K's character. Um, she was she was a um, she was a dr she was a Drow Bard, and, and we were going with and I was going with the notion that Drow were um were tra were tra were um travel were travelers and were traveling gypsies instead of the usual approach with um drow. Um, now, they weren't in they weren't in the first player's handbook because because according to Watsi they needed more time to tinker with it. Um, some people raged, but when it came out it was it was worth the wait. This is the the fourth edition bard is the only case where they shifted from being a divine caster to an arcane caster. Um, and it was a, and it was a leader archetype. The other one it was one of the main arcane leaders. The other one being the artificer from the Eberron book. Um, it did. It's um. But this was also where the, where the idea of using magical notes for buffing and debuffing instead of relegating it to full performances was brought in. Um, I think they were starting to steal from Monster Hunter at that point. Um, <laughs> it's, cer it's certainly a, it's certainly a possibility, and pe people are people already snidely der der um, deride Fourth Edition for for being too video gamey. Um, you know, because how how da how dare we take inspiration from video games? Well, of course, video games are a terrible place to take inspiration from. Mm -hmm. It's not like we've gotten some very vibrant and rich creative worlds and ideas from them or anything. No. Mm -hmm. Now, the five E bard, 
somebody in the development staff really seems to like Barth because they've been getting a lot of love over the years. Um, and the, and I'd say I'd say one I'd say one of the bi one of the big cases in point with this is how jack of all trades work. Typically, it was you could use untrained skill checks without getting penalized. In 5e, they can use half their proficiency bonus on skill checks they don't have. Which can get ridiculous, because then you have, a bar then you have say, a bard who can um, build siege weapons at, at a certain degree, at, depending on how high the level they are. Um. Oh, my proficiency bonus is plus four? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. And of course, getting spells up to ninth level because dabbling in magic means having a better spell cr progression than warlocks. For some reason. Oh. Yeah, that one didn't make sense to me. Also, the magical secrets ability, which lets you take spells from other classes' spell lists. So. So you could so you could be a necro dancer and take animate dead if you wanted, <laughs> and let let's not let's not forget let's not forget that um swift quiver was added to the ranger spell cast to try and make them less useless, but it ended up making the bard better. <laughs> um. <laughs> Now, that br that brings us to the le to the level up take. Now, I'd say I'd say one of the big additions that we that we have that we di that was not in the original is the fact that your choice of instrument seems to matter now with the with starting out with art specialty. That I know was not it was not in the original um, setup. Correct. So depending on, depending on whether you whether you're using a air instrument, a percussion, a string, visual or voice, you're going to be getting different benefits. Which I like this simply because for the longest time your actual instrument in a lot of cases even, um didn't really didn't matter. matter. No. It was it was flavor. All that mattered was that you had an instrument. Yep. And it, all it was was a flavor. All it affected was, oh, instead of playing a lute like a typical bard, you're playing pan pipes or a, a sitar or, you know, your, your tambourine for some of those people. Oh, no Folk bands. For the, for the purposes of your character, really. Yeah. Yeah. Now... Are, now, have have there been magic items over the years that that were it that were instruments that granted specific benefits? Yes, but that's what you expect out of magic items, so that doesn't count. Yeah, you, there's just bard specific magic items, which, to be fair, uh, bard specific magic items are cool, but they're they're not necessarily they don't they don't fulfill. It's not a part of character creation, so yeah. The the operative the operative thing about Bard specific magic items. There is magic items. Exactly, as as Chris Tavalone said, uh, bards are cool when you give them fireballs and stuff like that. But you know, that's that that comes as a course of uh, of the flute of fireballs or whatever have you. <laughs> consequence of no, as a consequence of choosing a stringed in instrument or a wind instrument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember one of my players being disappointed that it did that it didn't mean all that much when because he want he wanted to be a he wanted to be a bard who ha, who had a um, electric guitar because well brutal legend had come out that month. Hey monk, looking looking at the different categories and how they're how they're defined, mm -hmm. would you would you qualify a hurdy gurdy as a percussion instrument since it uses keys? Or a stringed instrument, since it's a bowed, since it's bowed strings. Um, <laughs> I, because of the fact that it's because of the fact that it's technically the strings that are making the sound, I'd probably put it as a string instrument. 
but it's like a hammered dulcimer in the fact that when you when you hit the toggles, they make specific sounds on the strings and on the body of the of the hurdy gurdy that changes uh, tonal intonation. Yeah, it's it's really on the it's really on the line. Like I, I had I, could... I had to ask. Hurdy gurdies are my favorite instrument. I can I could I could go either way with it. So so if if you if someone was if someone was to say that they that their instrument was a hurdy gurdy. I would simply I would simply say, okay, you can you can pick percussion or string, but you can't pick both. Could go with that. Let them choose which they want to use. Yeah. Um, what was a surprising opportunity for additional commentary? It seems, which I've only just remembered. A few years ago, or not? No, a few months ago, actually, I began working on. Uh, basically, a. a school, or maybe not a school, but a, a system of bardic magic which relied on notes, playing specific notes and songs, and being able to combine these in sequence. I believe it was actually inspired by our class rework discussion, and uh, that might come in handy tonight, because one of the things was that different instruments would provide you with different benefits, primarily modifiers. Interestingly enough, they were primarily modifiers on the different spell-like abilities that you would be using. This seems to more focus on slight modifiers. Yeah, I guess these are also modifiers, too. Yeah, these are modifiers to your spells. They did go in the same direction, which interests me. Uh, which... Given, given now, give, given that, um, when it comes to the in, when it comes to the individual at when it comes to the individual um, entries, because um, the because like I said, each of each of these get each of these is giving a different benefit. And what I'm very much reminded of, and actually when we did that rework process, one thing one thing that I was drawing a lot of notes from was a um, very obscure French RPG called Agone. Um, now, Agone was technically high fantasy, but it was drawing a lot of inspiration from the more fantastical of Shakespeare's plays. Um, Such as The Tempest? Yeah. And the spell... All of the spell lists in, the, in, that, in that game were all... Dick, were all based on, on music or performances in, su in some manner. Whether it be capturing, a, whether it be capturing a, a dancing spirit that provided the power, or so, or some other means, um, there was a there was a list of spells specifically for drums, a list of spells specifically for paintings, a list of spells specifically for um, wind instruments, and so on. I'm a I'm a little um, disappointed with the voice edition because it deals with our hated bane of casting. <laughs> yeah. Now, at the very least, but we do have some positive things to say about uh, how this class interacts with concentration later. So hold yeah. ho hold off on your uh, on your disdain for a moment because that might actually that might actually turn into your opinion. What you would highlight that ability as mm -hmm. might change when you view some of the later abilities. Um. Uh, air instruments, I. Air, instru air instruments. I like. I like the idea of you of using this to do stealth casting. Um, <laughs> I although it does it does have the it does have the whole it does have the whole rest issue that we've talked about. Um, percussion um, is is um, I'd say I'd say is good. I'd say is going to be going to be. Going to be good. Going to be good for anybody for anybody who wa who wants to be a wants to be a spell sniper, <laughs> or spe especially with spells from the sound school. The sound school. Did you folks uh, make a note of that terminology? The sound school. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's an actual? Because I don't believe I haven't seen that. Uh, in the other documents that we've gone over as of yet, we no, have, we have not. We have that. not gone. Out, we have not gone over any document that has an actual spell list. <laughs> and I think, hmm. what 
was it that we discussed last week that we hadn't seen in any caster class when we were talking about wizard? Um, we had we was it seen... concentration? It was it was about yeah it was about concentration it was and how we had we... seen references to it as, <laughs> as yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. When it when it comes to seeing concentration here now, makes me wonder if concentration's done a lot differently because it didn't say concentration spells; it said concentrating on bard spells. Especially, well, the other what's more specific on that is, and I, let me just read it off for the for the benefit. Voice. When using this musical art as a spell focus, you have advantage on checks ma made to maintain concentration on a bard spell. Checks to maintain concentration is not has not really been a thing in in five e in the tr in the traditional lumps um, in the sense of some of some of the previous editions. Given that, I can't help but suspect if concentration is going to work a little bit differently in level up, because. Unless now I'm I want to see their spell rules even more. Unless I'm mistaken, with 5e core, um, concentration is basically an on-off switch. You're either you're yeah. either concentrating to maintain a spell, or you're not. You're concentrating to maintain a spell, and it and your concentration is not affected until you like take a hit or something like that, and then you have to make a check. And you can only concentrate on one concentration spell at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, Whereas this sounds like concentration almost seems like an upkeep for certain types of spells. It almost sounds like channeling rather than concentration. Yeah. Now, sw now um, sw when it comes to um, string instruments, it says whenever you cast a bard spell from the movement or teleportation <laughs> school, you can target an additional creature within 15 feet of you. Um, I can see that I can see that for people who like to be jumpy, and again, again, I can't help I can't help but wonder if the if the spell if instead of instead of a um instead of a singular spell list for each of the classes the way it's been done in core, if they if they plan on having sub they plan on having subtypes within within each um class's spell list. I do. I, <clears throat> I really need to see their 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 magic system at this mm -hmm. point. Hopefully that's one of the next uh, play playtest documents they drop after after characters or after classes. I mean, uh, we'll we'll see we'll see. Um, visual visual um, has it that whenever you cast a bard spell, you can <clears throat> you can choose to make an ally able to see you to be the point of origin of that spell. You also have to be able to see the targets that. When I see that, I'm very much reminded of the way the shaman in fourth edition worked. Um, the shaman had an animal companion, which, e which even at the start, you could use as the point of origin for your spells. Mm -hmm. um, that opens up a lot of options. True, uh, but it, it's even. I like that there are five specialties. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, the, the first three, you know, the air instruments, percussion, and string instruments are pretty easy to follow. Visual art, uh, most people are thinking things like illusion magic, painting, dancing, but they, they forget things like calligraphy. Mm -hmm. I love that one. And now I'm imagining making a bard that's a Shinkenger. <laughs> um, Got to use my mojikata. Yep, and si since since um one of the other visual um ones they go with is di is dance. There's pl there's plenty of ways you can go with that. Yep. Um. Some of them some it's just that it's just that some of them are safe for work and some of them are not. <laughs> <laughs> How how many uh, how many people do you think are going to choose uh, um, tiefling pole dancers? Yes. <laughs> uh, 
the an the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> About By the way, go ahead. My favorite example among voice is insults. Why am I thinking? Why am I having flashbacks to Monkey Island? Uh, no, 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 no. Mine comes from something uh, much, much different from Monkey Island, actually. Uh, there's a Korean novel called Overgeared. And the main character, one of his retainers, is a uh, is one of the weaker classes of the game, an orator. Who constantly uses this ability uh, to basically um, debuff his enemies by uh, by insulting them? <laughs> it is the best. Is that? Mm -hmm. um. Now, now, uh, I one of the other things I can. I can safely I can safely say it is is making a significant change from its core is the way bardic inspiration works. There is still the bardic inspiration die which is a d6 but then things get interesting. Now the original um, bar, the original bardic inspiration was ju was just once within once within the next 10 minutes somebody can roll that roll that d6 and add it to add it to a check. Um, and of course, it, of course, the die size goes go, goes up as you, as you level up. Um, but what's in what's interest what's interesting here? Actually, no, I, I take I take it back. I had the wrong thing. The um, the bardic inspiration that still works the same as it does, but battle him, that's something new, and that ti that ties into bardic inspiration. Mm -hmm. At the start, at the start of your turn, you can activate a battle hymn by expending a use of bardic inspiration. This is not an action. Performing a battle hymn requires your concentration, as though you're casting a spell. Mm. Once activated, a battle hymn continues until you choose to end it or lose concentration, or if activated during a combat, whenever the combat ends. The number of battle hymns you know are listed in the battle hymns column of the bard table. Whenever you gain a bard level, you can swap one battle hymn you know for a new one. And we have a short list of ba of battle hymns that you have access at at different tiers. And despite the now, admittedly, Five E's version of concentration with battle hymns in this case. Makes some degree of sense if it weren't if it weren't for the issues that we've talked about with concentration. Yeah. Um, but I I like that this is an expansion of use for the um for the bardic inspiration because we've talked we've talked about this in the past. A straight static modifier on its own is not going to have as much impact to to uh, the to players. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> whereas, so, whereas um, the battle hymns are going to ha are going to have a lot are going to have a lot more, especially give especially given what they can do. Especially looking at the ta the example table that they have. Mm -hmm. I mean, from for and let let me scroll up so I can see how, see how many you get. So you start at you start with one hymn. You gain another at fourth, and another another at seventh, and another at tenth. And assuming that the progression is every three levels, it would also then be again at thirteenth, sixteenth, and nineteenth. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's a, I'm pretty sure there's further tiers when it comes to the um bar, when it comes to the bard the battle hymns available at different bard levels. Yeah. So that means you're going to get two of them from the first through fourth level at the very least, because those are the only ones that will be available to you at the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and 
Then we have then we have spell casting, which wor which works more or less the same as it usually does. It's still it's still charisma spell casting. You still have yep. you still have the whole thing with cantrips, slots, and the like. Um, and rituals. You can either use an arcane focus or an art specialty as a spell casting focus. Um, I don't think we've I don't think we've covered um, arcane focus. Because we haven't, because I think that would fall under equipment, and I'd be cur I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold off on the spellcasting focus thing because I want to see if they do anything with that particular um, motif. Yeah. But that's certainly a step up from the way spellcasting focus worked originally, where your spellcasting focus was a musical instrument, whereas in this case yeah. you can use an arcane focus or your art specialty as your focus. And since your art specialty isn't a specific item, just an item within a school of items, <clears throat> you could technically say you didn't have your, your special flute with you, mm -hmm. but you were able to pick up this really cool ocarina. You could still use the ocarina as your, as your art specialty and thus as a focus for spellcasting. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> I'm going to summon my bird and fly away now. <laughs> of course, then then we have exploration next, which we're gonna hold. Which once again we're gonna hold off on until we get to that dedicated part. Um, let's see. Then and we get jack of all trades that yeah. looks like it's straight out of core. Indeed, it looks almost identical. Yep, half your proficiency bonus rounded down for any non-skilled. Or anything you're not proficient with. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, can't use unskilled because you're technically skilled in everything. You're just not proficient. Um, yeah, it's, the wording is slightly different, but yes. Um, it, it, it amounts to the same bonus. But you instead, I don't see, instead of Song of Rest, they instead have um, varied expertise at second level, where... You choose one one skill or tool you're proficient with. You gain an expertise die on checks with that chosen skill. At at six, um, at sixth level, and again at t and again at tenth, fourteenth, and eighteenth, you choose an additional one. Um, I know how I know how you feel on um on the whole gain an expertise di gain expertise die. Um, I'd say. But I'd say, um, at the very, at the very least, something like varied expertise is certainly in key in keeping with the uh, with the attempt of jack of all trades. Um, third level is bard college. We're going to be getting to that to that, that in the usual spot. Um, then ASI, no com no once again no comment on ASI. No comment. Um, at fourth level you start out with bardic legend. This is interesting. <laughs> At fourth level, you write a bardic tale of your adventures. Your bardic legend takes whatever form you like. When you enter a town and spend a day playing or recounting the tale, the reputation of you and your allies starts to grow. In addition to receiving local quests suited to exploits detailed in your bardic legend, when you rest in a town that knows your bardic legend, and your, you and your allies regain all spent hit dice over the course of a long rest. At seventh level, you craft a second legend. Townsfolk are either more amenable or afraid of you, depending on the type of bardic legend you create. Choose one of the following skills, deception, insight, intimidation, or persuasion. You gain advantage on checks when using the chosen skill against any commoner who has heard this. At 10th level, you craft a third legend that is able to spawn other tales. Whenever you enter a town or city, you can name a new bardic legend of your choice. Allies that are part of the tale gain inspiration when they finish a long rest in that settlement. Any other creatures that are part of the tale have their reputations ruined. Either they confront you directly to stop the rumor, or they are unable to hide or deal in that town for the length of time you are in it. Once you've used this feature in a settlement, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest. This is this is the building. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have marked in multiple colors. Can you guess? Uh, can you guess which are which? Seventh they level is going to be. 
I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the seventh level one where that just tells you to choose a skill check to get uh, advantages in is either yellow or red. Even though it kind of makes sense, it doesn't give you a specific reaction that you're looking for in that mechanical hook. It just says amenable or afraid, depending on the type of bardic legend, which is very vague. Mm -hmm. right. Whereas the fourth level is going to be blue, because the uh, the quest suited to the exploits detailed in your bardic legend is both a mechanical and narrative hook that I know you would love. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Especially of course, given that the other like people who suck in that rumor this is basically like an activity. It's one of those things that like it's an activity that I would love to just be part of core, but it doesn't really fit as part of core in D anD. d So it kind of it kind of has to go to a class. But if it has to go to a class, they pick the right one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what it's, it's a delight. It's yeah. a delight. I'm, I'm I'm seeing that red is, or I'm seeing that seventh is probably the only one you have true issues with, whereas the fourth and tenth level versions are uh, are ones you you like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I highlighted those in blue. I adore them with seven level seventh level and stuff like that. Given given what we went over in the warlord uh, documents specifically, where they just tell you, listen, at certain levels you just get followers, you just get you get a stronghold. Or something equivalent. I don't see why the Bard, for instance, has a replacement for the 7th level feature. Why the Bard couldn't get... You get X amount of gold. Or materials or items of equivalent value. And, of course, we also have the Berserker slash Barbarian um, that had the whole... As as you grow in level, people get scared of you. So when you get to settlements, they give you gifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Why not just give that? Why not start giving some of that stuff a, a vague monetary value? Doesn't have to necessarily be exact. It, you can you make certain adjustments for it based on like, listen, if it's going to be materials, it's not going to. There's a there's a standard deviation to the material if it's going to be materials or an item. I know that the bard is supposed to be is supposed to be a jack of all trades kind of skill monkey, which I think is I think is the argument for the seventh level benefit. But um, it's too in my in my opinion it's too it's too similar to the kind of static bonus that you're already going to be getting from varied expertise. You're just super boosting the number. Yeah. So it's 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 whatever. Now, granted, and, that and is... course, I'm always going to think of it all. I do sort of like going. I do like having them in the document because they give me an opportunity to uh, think of an alternative and write it on one of these note cards next to me. You go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, they, they, that's my commentary for that lovely bardic legend ability. I think that's I think that's delightful. I I I I would like the the uh, seventh level version to have just a little bit more uh, hook to it, such as instead of choosing one of those things, um, if you're building a a heroic a, a, a tale of heroism and valor, uh, more people are willing to give you information about. Um, hidden treasures and and caves that are unexplored that might hide some secrets of the world. Whereas if you're building a tale of uh, of sinister dar daring do, uh, people are more li likely to give you information you specifically ask them for because they really don't want to deal with you and want to run away, want to run away right now. Mm -hmm. So one is they're volunteering information of little tag ends that the DM, the DM can think up for, hey, maybe there's something over here. Hey, maybe there's something over there. Whereas the other one helps you in pursuing a specific goal. Mm -hmm. well, I like the one that just gives you straight up something of monetary value yeah. and delineates the monetary value because from that point forward, what it is that you get, you know, if, the, if you get an item, uh, there's no reason why that item can't say something about the townspeople's opinions of you on account of the specific tale that you wove. They give, they give you a voodoo doll. 
with a, yeah. with a, with a needle already through it. <laughs> we don't like you. Go away. You're scaring us. It could be, it could be a treasure map. A treasure map could theoretically be of... Uh, it, it, it could count as an item of sufficient monetary value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's leading you to something of, of sufficient monetary value. Yeah. That that could be seen, too. I, there, there's a lot of things that could be done with the seventh level ability that I felt could have added more mechanic hooks and more narrative hooks. Mm -hmm. Now... Next is Battle Him Focus, which is which is the which is um one of th one of the one of the one of three improvements that you can do to um, Battle Hymns. You have the option of you no longer require concentration for your Battle Hymns, but you can only maintain one at a time. At any point during another creature's turn, you can use your reaction to activate a hymn. This replaces any currently activated ones, um, and it does, but it does not require expending a use of inspiration. Or you, or you can affect a number of additional creatures equal to your charisma modifier. Um, I can see, I can, I can see one of these being marked in yellow, one and one in blue at the ver at the very least. I get the feel. Really? I'm gonna go out on a limb and and say that the um, one that's marked in yellow is the third one. Go on. Um, sim simply because compared to compared to what com compared to the compared to the others, it's significantly le it's it's just adding more. Um, rather than doing different, I'd say the one that's the one that I'd say is mar the, that's probably marked in blue is the second one. Okay. Oh. Interesting. So I so I've actually marked uh, all of these in blue for various reasons. Of course, I like anything that allows you to bypass a concentration restriction. I hope to see, God, I really hope to see more of that in uh, these documents if they're intent I, on including. I'd like to point out though that it says they no longer require concentration, but you can only maintain one at a time. This implies that without that improvement, you could use more than one battle hymn. Oh yeah, limited limited ostensibly by your bardic inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the second one is the one I find the most interesting: being able to hot, being able to hot swap as a reaction. Again, importantly, without actually using a uh, bardic inspiration die, that's that's very important. Yeah. So th this do this does this does mean that you could. Um, you could you could easily. It's one of those things where I could I could see I could see um, the second one. Get let me let me double check to to see some. So yeah, at fourth level you're gonna have you're gonna have two hymns. So it's so that's gonna make that's gonna actually make it worth it to be able to potentially hot swap. Plus I um. I'm all, I'm always in favor of get, of giving potential options when it comes to utilizing reactions. It's, yeah, reactions don't usually have a lot of options, do they? Um, Especially be... the, this one would be this one would progress fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be bogging down the game because you're just altering your own effects that you're producing. Yeah, it's uh, it also re it also reduces. The pot it also reduces the potential of of someone angsting over what over whether or not their choice of a of a of a him is go is going to be screwing them over because if if the one that they if the if they've got one active that that isn't working they can just swap. Oh, that's the reason. That's the reason why I like the second one the most of, of these is because it is because it has the at most. Any point, yeah. Mm -hmm. You spend your reaction at any point during another creature's turn to just go, this song is not doing what I want it to do. Swap! Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's see. Font of Inspiration at 5th level. You regain all expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a short rest. Um, that's nice. Which is that's, actually, that's actually really nice. Which is, um, based, is exactly the same as it is in Core. But given given the way battle hymns work, it has a bit more context. Um, you also have key change, which it which was not which was not in core, 
where you can you can switch instruments and change your art specialty um what once between what but you can you can't do that again until you finish a rest um you already know how I feel about the ladder but being able to being able to hot swap your it your instru your um your instruments give gives me ideas <laughs> Let's say you need stealth spells at this time. Well, better go from my percussion to air. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it do it does it does mean that um that that by the by the time by the time people are at mid level, they prob they probably are not they're probably not going to have the hi not need to have the hyper focus on just one instrument all the time. So you, yeah. you could see somebody having a one man band's level of instruments just what just what, just something from all of them <laughs> which would mean yeah. that they would have Right and they're they're not it's not something that technically speaking they should be using often even even just looking at the theme it is their it is their art specialty at, after all so the, this is one of those few instances in which the shorter long rest is actually quite fine Especially given what you're, what what it is that you're getting out of it, because you're just swapping pa passive benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, see, so you, you get Maestro at seventh level, where you're, where uh, you are so perfect in your craft that your style begins to bleed into your uh, your other workings. Pick one, you pick one type of art specialty. You always gain the benefits of that one, no matter what instrument you're using. <laughs> That brings up some interesting combinations once when you combine that with key change. Yeah. Mm. So for so for instance, if if we're going with if we're going if we're going with your particular um get gag earlier of somebody who wanted to wanted to go full Shinkenger, um you would, <laughs> at that level you would always have access to the benefits of um the visual art specialty yes but uh along with the visual art specialty you could now put in the voice arts cuz you know they constantly announce themselves against the gidoshu mm -hmm. and and now you have voice and and visual and you're just like yes i'm going to draw calligraphy at you and tell you how bad of a person you are at that point, you've at that point you've gone full kabuki. I mean, which uh, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear what I can hear one of our buddies doing doing the gag of that's the joke. No, I was I was going to answer with zeke zeke because you mentioned kabuki and my mo my mind immediately goes goemon. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I'm not sure whether to whether to give you t whether to give you the too sweet treatment or smack you. Mm. Neither. Let's continue. Yeah. And <laughs> at eighth le at eighth level, you ha you have another um special you have another improvements for bat for battle him or you can double dip into battle him focus if you wish. Um. So the options you have is. You can expend two uses of Bardic Inspiration to activate two Battle Hymns at the same time. Losing Concentration or Changing Battle Hymns deactivates both. You can choose Harmony of Pain, Overbearing Rhythm, or Song of Clarity. This one, this one is always active as long as you're able to express your art, and using another hymn does not deactivate it. Pick three spells, fourth level or lower, that have only vocal components. These can be from any class spell list. You may use two uses of Bardic Inspiration to cast one of the chosen spells at the start of your turn with no action required instead of activating a battle hymn. <laughs> so you don't even have to use the vocal component. You're just like, I want this to go do that, and it happens. Mm -hmm. um, when you expend a use of Bardic Inspiration to activate a battle hymn, you may also grant a Bardic Inspiration die to a oh. creature within 60 feet. Oh! Oh! I'm going to activate a battle him. Oh, and you get bardic inspiration. Ah! I can't think of any... I can't really... Th 
I can't really. Th it it would be really hard to say which of these would I would put in yellow. Because all I don't think I, I don't I think, think I'd all, put any of these in yellow. All of these I think would count as blues. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, all we're... of them are really good. I put the uh, I put the first one in yellow. To use two inspiration to activate two battle hymns. Uh, yeah, because the, I I don't because I already have a when it comes to the fifth edition bard, I already get a little not annoyed. I I, I get kind of antsy around anything that forces you to use that bardic inspiration for particularly subclass features but it feels like even though it's a short rest it feels like a very limited resource and i get antsy around depleting that too quickly because as i've stated in other in other shows this gave funnily enough on mildred's channel especially the bard's mechanical niche which it owns solely is being the most proficient and the most skilled at adjusting the numbers, uh, the various bonuses and available features to both the party and the enemy at any given time. They are the person, they, they are like, they, they have the best capacity and the most, the widest toolkit when it comes to making meta adjustments to the party's capability at any given moment in time, uh, and anybody else's abilities at any given moment in time. He's so when I look at things that, that sort of soak up those bardic inspirations, I get I, 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 I get a little nervous around them. And when it comes to something like battle hymns, it's like, well, battle hymns already don't really... Do they take an action to activate? They don't take an action to activate, do they? No. Battle hymn. No. Yeah, it's just no. at the start of your turn. It's no action required. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where it's like, ah, uh, that... I feel like you're getting less bang for your buck. Because you could technically just... You could just activate... If you really want to, you could activate the second one on your other turn. And if you do that... If you have any of these other ones, like if you have a, when you expend a use of Bardic Inspiration to activate a Battle Hymn, you may also grant an Inspiration Die to a creature within 60 feet. That's, in my opinion, that's way worth it, because as opposed to you using two for the price of two at once, you get to use four for the price of two. If you want to go along, if you want to achieve basically the same goal in a slightly longer time frame. So that's why I marked that in yellow. There is also the possibility that um, it's letting you burn yourself out faster, and I I tend to not like uh, abilities that do that for minimal benefit. Um, I'm the I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit partial to giving the uh, to giving the option to ha to have some to have high risk high reward um uh, options for options for people who want to pursue it. Um, Sorry. It's just not high reward. It's my issue. But you can get the same effect by taking your next turn. Now, which hopefully you're going to be able to do. Now, um, the se the second one, I think I think. It Did you put that one in yellow as well? Because I have a hard I have a hard time seeing that one being in yellow. No, no, no. That one's in blue. Mm -hmm. That one's in blue. Uh, I think <laughs> the only one that. The only other one that I marked in yellow, so choose harmony of pain or harmony of pain, overbearing rhythm, or song of clarity. Chosen battle hymn is always active as long as you are able to express your heart. And using another battle hymn does not deactivate. It. That's awesome. That's just cool. What that what that really means is as long as you are able to express your heart. That means you don't even have to be expressing it at that time. Yeah. That means that's active. Anytime you have your art spec uh, your art specification and focus with you. Mm -hmm. Now, right. for, for the, now for the record, harmony of pain. Um, at the end at the end of your turn, a creature within sixty feet of you gains a number of temporary HP equal to your proficiency. Overbearing rhythm. You choose one creature within thirty feet. The first attack each round that tar that targets you or the or the chosen creature is made with disadvantage. 
Song of Clarity. Choose one creature within 60. At the start of its turn, the chosen creature may exp may expend and roll one of it one of its hit die to regain that to regain hit points. Yeah, those are the those, those are all the first level ones that you get. Mm -hmm. So it's it gives you it gives you a lot more bang for your buck. Yeah. It gives you a lot more bang for your buck when you think about it. Because now that frees up, if you were holding on to any of those for whatever reason, if those were one of your selections for battle hymns, now that also frees you up to select other battle hymns. Um, so I'd you're say, getting a getting a lot of use out of that. I'd say one that that um was going to be very interesting with with the optimization crowd and myself with some of the combinations I can think of how it could be used is battle hymn specialization. That is three spells of fourth level or lower from any class spell list. Yeah, that one's a, a particularly... That's under Battle Hymn Specialization. But yeah, pick three spells of fourth level or lower that only have vocal components. Mm -hmm. This was... I was te So here's the thing. I was tempted to mark this in yellow, but not because it was bad in any capacity, but because it was... Replacing, as far as I can tell, that was that was replacing, uh, magical. What was it? Magical secrets was the thing. Was that a what's the mystical secrets? What's the, what's the core bard ability that allows you to steal that stuff? Um, let's see. I think it's magical. It's yeah, just magic magical secrets. Magical recall. Secrets, which is for, which is a 14th level um, effect. Right, and if you're a College of Lore Bard, you get, to, you get it at a 5th level as well. Um, although Magical Secrets, you, you pick 2 additional spells from any, from, and from any class. As, lo as, yeah. as long as it, as long as it's of, of your, um, of your level. And there is the possibility that there might be some spin on magical secrets at, at once you once we um see what the teens look like. Right. It, no, they I was more thinking about the I'm more thinking about the lore bard's ability because that that is part of a subclass. Mm -hmm. And uh and so that'll make our subclass hour interesting. But among other things, it that draws questions for me about how much access you're going to have to other classes spell lists. Because I, I do view that as being integral to the Bard, even going back all the way to 1st edition AD&D, &D, going back to od and even, which is something I rarely comment on because my knowledge on it is limited, especially to what I know about about AD&D. &D. But it's, I, think, I think it's so integral to the Bard that I want to make sure that stays in and is touched on regularly. But yeah, so so knowing all that, yeah, I, I think I'll leave it in blue, because it's because this is another bang for your buck thing. I in this case, I don't really um. Can we cast? So here's there's an ambiguity here. This is my final note on it. Pick three spells of fourth level or lower that have only vocal components. Spells can be from any class list. You may spend two uses. Of Bardic Inspiration to cast one of the chosen spells at the start of your turn with no action required. So I think what that means, correct me if I'm wrong, is these three spells are always in your back pocket. But actually casting them requires you to use your Bardic Inspiration. I would like it if they were added to your spells known. Well, these are also spells that you can cast even if you're otherwise uh, disposed. Like, it says oh, yeah. no action. And sure, they're, they're spells that only use a vocal uh, component, but this means that even if you're under magical silence and can't use a vocal component for your normal spells, you can still cast one of these. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's what that means. It's just it has no it action says, required. Yeah, if there's no action required, then you don't use the component. I don't think that's what that means. Um, I don't have... I. There's no interaction in core that says if you're not using an action to, to do something that, that you're not expending the components. 
Well, the only but, the only component the only component is vocal. Right, but I I I'm res which is why I'm only responding specifically to the magical silence thing. But otherwise, I think you're I think you're correct. I think if you were paralyzed, uh, you might actually be able to. That would be interesting. I wonder if there is any well, restrictions because, further up. Because even something that has an action time of instantaneous and of component of vocal, part of the action is using the component. If there's no action required, the component isn't That's used. not, like I said, there's no interaction in core that, that produces that. Uh, whether I have to, if, if I'm able to somehow cast Misty Step without expending an action or something like that, if I'm gagged, I'm still not able to use Misty Step. Because that, that's a requirement. That is a restriction on whether or not you are able to use the spell, period. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the material component, I can't do it. If I don't have the vocal component, I can't do it. These are uh, circumstantial circumstantial restrictions on whether or not the spell is even possible. But I'm, 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 looking, th I'm, I'm looking through what, um, what spells in core would qualify for this. And a few, a few things that end up coming up. Um, blind, blindness slash deafness comes up. Um, blur. Let's see. Both of um, which are excellent. Command. There's not a good one. Um, dimension door. Um, fairy fire. Oh. I didn't know that one was only vogue. I could have sworn that one had a material component to it. That's interesting. Um, guardian of faith. You expect oh a pinch of glitter or something like uh, that for a material component. He healing word, um, hunter's mark, knock, um, mass healing word, <laughs> um, misty step, prayer of healing. Let's see what else. Monk, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, there's a lot. I have the I have the full list. Uh, except it, Tasha's and the elemental evil things accepted, which I guess would be in Santa. Yeah, those got added added to Xanathar's, But yeah, even then, there's there's a long list. We we get it. There is a lot. Yeah. Oh. Many of them are on the Bard's list, uh, somewhat predictably. Mm -hmm. And. It's it's fairly it's fairly light it's now get that's it's the it's the amount it's the possibilities that you that you have with 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 a good amount of those that's the reason why I um I think why that third why that third option I I like so much um simply because there's some it, there's going to be some interesting things you can do with that but getting to exploration next. Um, one that one that I immediately want to highlight is is um, bewitching companion. Now it does have the whole expertise die thing, which yeah we've talked we've talked about that. But then it goes. In addition, your relationship with hirelings, NPCs, or even enemies that accompany you on a journey are improved by one step. See pr see esteem on page blank in chapter seven adventuring. I want to keep this one in the in the back in the back of our mind for la for later because. I look at that. I look at that, and I'm going, okay. So we're getting. So we're. We may have some sort of relationship system. I'm curious how this esteem system is going to work. Seems like we're definitely getting it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely get it, which excites me a fair bit because I've been working on alignments for Lords of Brachus. So alternative systems for resolving. Is for resolving issues of importance or impropriety or renown, infamy, whatever have you, have recently taken up residence in my brain and any kind because they they come in handy. Understanding, especially in free form campaigns, in r proper campaigns, of course, which I run, uh, where the, where the players are have agency and they're able to make an impact on the world. Mm -hmm. Understanding what it is at what point it is appropriate in a sort of grounded sense, not necessarily a realistic one, for an army to come after them. 
or what the appropriate response is to their well, just any situation where you could think of where you're wondering when it is that certain thresholds might be achieved or strong consequences strong reactions to the player's actions uh might have consequences it's it's difficult to figure out if the players have taken out a few airships from a given army what at what point do they send a force uniquely specialized to deal with the players that's that's a difficult question at what point you do you start getting shot at by ncr rangers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally that. It's it's a reputation, and reputation systems are great for that. Because you might say, "Oh, well, I, I, I can imagine somebody saying, well, why doesn't the GM just decide?'" And and I've two did I, you know, I've made, I've explained plenty of times in the past why that's not a sufficient or even useful answer in any capacity. But it's just having a table in front of you to let you know, hey. We've already thought of this for you. Go, just follow this, and you'll be fine. is is fantastic. I don't think you can. I don't think it's responsible to have an RPG without it. So good on you. Level up, devs. Is what I think. I'm trying yeah. to say. Um, I can see. I can see marching song getting some getting some use solely to have an excuse for the bard to to annoy the rest of the party dur during travel, since. You know how to inspire and motivate your companions as they travel. Allies within 30 feet of you travel one mile per hour faster than normal. Your party cannot use stealth while traveling in this manner. Um, uh, all I hear in my head with this is the minstrel singing Bravely Bold Sir Robin. Um. Lightful. <laughs> Um, this is, I'm going to mark this in yellow because we don't have a uh, we don't have an exploration system, as far as we know. So you're marking that in yellow with a asterisk. Uh, no, I'm just marking it in yellow because we because we don't have an exploration system. It's it's uh, and even if we even if we did, I'm not really sure if this would like you would have to. It's just it's this goes in yellow. Mm -hmm. um. The mechanical hook that you would come up with because you would probably to attach this to an exploration system would be convoluted and likely unique to this given ability or dubious benefit. Mm -hmm. It's unclear to me why this is in the game. The one above it, brutish confrontation, is. I'm going to mark that in red because it angers me somewhat in, in several different ways, but the the funniest ways, Brutish Confrontation. Choose a skill you are proficient with. You gain an expertise die on checks made using the chosen skill. In addition, when you gain, adva or you gain advantage on ability checks made to prepare an ambush. This is weird and uh, dumb. I feel like, th I feel like that should... I feel like brutish confrontation should have been in the ranger. Should go with the ranger. That's what you were about to say, right? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Why? Why is this is not in the ranger? This is such a weird inclusion, and it's phrased like choose a skill you're perfect. So, get an expertise die on a on a free skill of of indeterminate uh, of no thematic uh, coherence whatsoever. And gain advantage on ability checks made to prepare an ambush. Why not just give me a description of a cool thing that happens when I prepare an ambush? Mm -hmm. And what happens when that ambush is set up? Um, slight confidence, it's... I, I put that in, I'd probably put that in yellow because, because you're... Because, um... It is it all for all intents and purposes. It is you gain an expertise die on something and gain advantage on on something. Um, yeah, it's not it's not it's bad. Not. It's just it's just not all that interesting. Relatively, yeah, you're just song alternating. Of, um, song of Rest. Um, I put in blue because in part because Song of Rest is a classic. Um, but there's all but there's also the. Fact that getting getting a few getting a few extra hit points is something I'm not gonna uh, I'm not going to turn down, 
I do. Yeah, that one's just solid. Yeah. yeah. Um. With. With um show with show off. This one, I I would if it weren't for the wording, I probably would have put this one in yellow. But because of the way it's pre because of the way it's presented, it has some it has some narrative possibilities. And so show off, choose a skill you're proficient. This is this is common. It turns out it's they're really padding these up with choose a skill you're proficient in, and you get an expertise die. Yeah. In addition, when you succeed on an acrobatics or athletics check made to do a bunch of physical things. Uh, a number of creatures equal to your proficiency bonus get advantage on the same check made to overcome the same obstacle. This is, um, I mean, there is a little bit of narrative to this one. I might even be tempted to mark it in blue, uh, just because it, it technically is good. Because here's the thing: there is a defined success state when it comes to these checks mm -hmm. it's not clearly defined your gm is going to say it but if your gm has you make a check in order to get up something or in order to climb something or whatever uh one you're the best person to lead off with it and two there there is a defined effect mm -hmm. that happens when you make this check which is you do manage to climb over the thing you do manage to leap over danger Etc. Etc. So now that other person can actually, so it, it bypasses a typical annoyance I have with the uh, with the various roll higher checks. So I might act. So in spite of my usual misgivings, I I will actually mark this one in blue. That and this is some this show off is something that is definitely in keeping with a lot of the archetypes for bards. Especially the more mo especially the more modern archetypes with bards of the of the of the silver tongued jackass. I don't know if this has much to do with their tongues, but hey, phrasing. Uh, eh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just the, this is the right spot for it. Could, could go we go back uh, over residence? Uh, could, go could, ahead, Zan. I was gonna say, could we could we count? Physically overcoming an obstacle being that time that the bard fucked a dragon. Can we not? <laughs> I kind of want to count it. Let's not no, say we no, did. No, I'm not interested in that. God, if there's one thing that <laughs> fucking infuriates me, it's a constant, everybody making the same fucking joke about the bard. Jesus Christ. Um, let's not and say we did. Nothing personal against, nothing personal against you, Zan. This is Jesus. I see it everywhere. Well, it's a meme for it's a reason. my fault for following uh, anything D&D &D related, really. You're in I a mean, call, you're in a call you with two shit posters. Yeah. I, so I expect better of you. I expect no, no. better of you. <laughs> <laughs> you expect effort from shit posters? I expect a monicum of creativity. If That's counter to the post. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> very creative. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. Yes, they no. are. Shit yes, they are. No, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> this, is not, this is not an opportunity to workshop. Tell me. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to residence because we skipped that one as well. Uh, choose a skill you're proficient with. Blah, 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 blah. You get to choose a skill. Expertise die. In addition, when you or a companion cast a ritual spell, its duration is doubled and affects twice the usual number of targets. I would have liked a. You know what? Yeah, that's actually. Eh. I I might have edited this to say or effects or the area of effect is doubled. Mm -hmm. Or things like I think forbiddance is a ritual. Uh, or hallowed. 
There's a number of different things you could you can play around with here. Actually, hallowed might not be a ritual, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I mark this one in blue. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna also throw in um, that townie should be should be in, should be in blue as well. That's for you, Dave. Uh, townie, choose a skill you're proficient with, expertise, die. As long as you have a positive reputation in a town or city, all basic goods and spellcasting components, that's an interesting uh, specification, cost one-third less. Round it down. I will mark that in blue. Mm-hmm. Ethan Winters, Lady Domitress, that's overcoming a physical obstacle. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but yeah, so abilities like Towny, this is why I went back to the to the gold thing earlier. Was that like cause what would I what would I call that if I were putting it on a card? Uh going back to the seventh level ability of Bardic Legend. You mean fourth level ability of Bardic Legend. Or the seventh level No, I mean the seventh level yeah. ability of Bardic Legend. Yeah, the seventh level edition, got it. So I could call that something like legendary favorites of own ability. I might say something like uh, legendary tribute, mm-hmm. and just call it. A, and just as we mentioned earlier, listen. If we're already operating on the assumption that you're going to settlements and you're going to places where your social abilities are going to be the most useful, and we're all we're already presuming that you're going to make it to a town. So for presuming that you're going to make it to a settlement of some kind, presumably they have something of value there. And there's no... So it's not it's not like the stretch in the usual campaign. So... Or... Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying, okay. So for, uh, for, for, for that 7th level Bardic Legend ability, are you going to be singing them a song about a shiny demon in the middle of the road? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the greatest song in the world. This is just a tribute. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> yeah, so basically, I think the bard should have. Uh, now that we're, I mean, we're basically finished going over the the bard as is here. I think that this should be more packed with. Social. I, I'm constantly complaining about the various social things. I think it's because, especially looking at these documents, it's like, well, we gotta have some stuff that's simple and fair. There, it, maybe there has to be some content that doesn't have a specific effect and just increases the number because you're working with uh, people who play D and D. Except, so. except, I can't, I can't really go with that because the because the working title for this has been Level Up Advanced Fifth Edition. Yeah, um, I'd I'd actually like to point but out it's advanced fifth edition is the thing that you're advancing. You're starting from a pretty low bar, which means the sky is the limit. Regardless, um, I'd actually like to point out a slightly disheartening trend as we've been going on through these. Go What's on that in the more recent character or, or class uh, dossiers we've been. Examining, specifically starting with the ones where we started getting that intro paragraph that has the insert art, mm-hmm. I've been seeing less narrative hooks in general. Less social strata uh, additions in general. The whole, the really? whole, the whole, evo- the whole, um, the whole, I can, I can see where you're going with that because in some of the early documents at, at certain levels, there was a, there was a case of a, of a, of a point where choose choose one of these choose one of these three um na- narrative advantages that you could get yes yeah that's right the cuz the wizard didn't have any but i think the berserker did the berserker did i'd say the i'd say the one that blatantly so was lacking at the most was the right? the one that was lacking at the most was the adept yeah, yeah the... cuz we did the warlord because the warlord also had them, as yeah. is appropriate, and then the adept very much like fell like I mean they basically dropped off the face of the map. Mm-hmm. And, and 
it's around that time where we started seeing this new format in the dossiers. Yeah. Right, because it, it very much shifted, because the better exploration abilities were already... I know that we're talking about social strata abilities, but there's a connection here. The better exploration abilities were already... Things I had to do with the... Things that were class abilities, which had to do... Which were themed around the environment, but did not appear to really have anything to do with a wider exploration system. And then the ones that we ignored were things about carrying capacity and stuff like that. Things that had no influence on 5th edition because they because nobody uses them in 5th edition. They're not really an exploration system. Mm -hmm. yeah. List of things to ignore. Regrettably. I, I, I like it when encumbrance matters. But I don't like it. But I don't like, uh, you know, spend gold not to starve. Nobody, nobody plays with that because it's stupid. If you want the, if you want the, if you really, really want that kind of thing, torchbearers over there. And, and indeed, nobody does. Uh, <laughs> not even the people who think they do. So, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slagging on, I'm not slagging on torchbearer. I'm just saying that for people who really, on really want that, there's. I'm slagging on people who think that sort of thing is uh, matters at all to RPGs. Um, or games in general. But uh, point being. Uh, the these abilities were these abilities were all right. We are themed around, like I said, they're class abilities, which just happen to have a thematic focus on the wilderness or some variation of exploration. And the social strata, it followed a pretty similar path where they were primarily class abilities, but they tend to focus on things like uh, other people. And as we've gone on. Those have sort of fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Let let I think I I think I can I think I can put I think I can put it like this. Um, now I don't I don't want to I don't want to slag certain I'm not trying to slag certain people in my Discord, but um, Phantom on the on the uh, monastery Discord um, earlier today had br had brought up how he considers the archetype slash subclasses, which we will get to shortly in 5th edition to be a more refined version of Paragon Paths. I disagreed, largely because they're, largely because I believe it's an apples and oranges situation. Um, subclasses, I think, are trying to be, are trying to be like kits in AD&D or class mods in Pathfinder. Um, whereas the Paragon Paths in, in um, 4th edition were one were one part of a grow of a growing trinity and I want and um I want to highlight the tiers setup that was in um that was in fourth edition. The first ten tiers were the heroic tier, the second ten were the paragon tier, and the third ten were the epic tier. And there's the implication that you go that you're going from zero to hero to 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 um let to let to the kind of legendary figure that's spoken of in a setting's lore. And with some of the, with some of the abilities we saw early on in the um level up documents, we were kind of seeing the birth pangs of that. Of you start you starting out as a nobody and by the end you're the you're the kind of figure that people are that is is seen as this as seen as this legendary figure in the set in the setting book for a story. Um, you know, go, going going from going from Squire Boy to King Arthur, essentially. And that, and if and if we want to really go with the meme, going from King, going from Squire Boy to King to King Ar to King Arthur to the heroic spirit. Um, okay, Squire Girl then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you 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 bring up a Nasuverse heroic spirit. You got to be ready to acknowledge that King Arthur is a girl. Yeah, my yeah, my bad on that front. But the point still stands. And um, I what have is, what, I, what exactly? Hmm? Say again, Ash. I don't. I I don't follow. I don't oh, know what um, the point was um. Not Nasu the Nasuverse Fate Stay series. Um, 
King no, Arthur. That, no, no, <laughs> no. The 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 point of the um of monks. Uh, the, the, description the, of fourth edition tears. Oh, he's getting to that point. The oh. point. The point is, you had. The point is, you had a. You had a. You had a narrative. Um, framework that you could that you could build ar around the idea that as you were go as you were going up in levels, you were getting. You weren't just getting more powerful. You were getting more. Fa you were getting more famous. Um, Fantasy Craft has also mastered this with it with its um side systems. But and we were starting to see this with some of the with some of the features as you level up in in some of the early documents, but something has hap something has happened in the interim, and that's kind of go and that and in the documents we've been seeing in the last few weeks, that's kind of been going by the wayside or being de emphas or being de emphasized or relegated to knacks. And even then, the knacks aren't uh, aren't. They don't have the same narrative impact that they had no, once before. No, the knacks are the knacks are are individually self-contained. They may as well be feats. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's a, that. That's a good point. They they've shifted away from their focus. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not. I'm not trying to be alarmist here, but I dearly hope this is not the trend going forward. Uh, I'm hoping that. Maybe it's it's an. It's not that we dislike the class feats because that's what these mostly are. Mm -hmm. We just had a the three of us had an affection for the class class feats, which were specific to exploration, and the class feats, which are specific to the uh, to the social strata. We like those. Um, it it in, added a spice that wasn't there initially. I'll put yeah. I'll put it like I'll put it like this. If you look, if you look at if you look at several OSR games, if you or if and in, s in some cases if you if you look at um, at s at certain entries throughout um a throughout a throughout A D and D throughout A D and D, um, you have you have a th you had a t you had a title system, um, where there there was a t there was a title associated with each level in a give in a given um class um i think and i think i um think that this went but this kind of went but this was this was more of a ad and d fir um first edition thing it with second edition that kind of went by the wayside um a game like axe also ha also has this where you ha where you have a a gradual a gradual expansion of um of your of a title, um. Like, let me. S I'm op I'm opening up one of one of my one of my A D and D entries to see to see if it's. Yeah. Um. Yeah. To you to, you, to to use an to use an example. This is from the this is from um, Unearthed Arcana A D and D first edition. Cav Caval Cavalier, you go from ar you have the t you have each let each level up to t up to tenth has a t has a title associated with it. Armager, Scudifer, Esquire, Knight er Knight Errant, Knight Bachelor, Knight Grand Knight, Banneret, Chevalier, Chevalier. Yeah, I, I mean, I could have just given you that for the Bard. Um, but. And, but the po the point is, is that the point is is that 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 kind of that kind of narrative that kind of narrative arc seems to be go seems to be um going by the wayside and that's if the, if that's maintained when I inevitably do a full review of the level of the level up five e book I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna be touching on this if the if they if it's not if it's not put back in. And especially if they keep the prior classes the same way they are now, it's going to cause narrative dissonance at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where where is the? I mean, where is the the wizard's various social strata of abilities about what did it, what is it like to be a mage? And because I commented very early on, or as far back as the Origins playtest, where they said, "Listen." You can craft an origin by swapping around a few of these components. 
And there was a discussion of like, well, what if it doesn't work for the GM setting? And I liked that they provided no uh, clarification, clarifying statements for, well, if it's different in your setting, it's like, no, this is how the game works. You can adapt your setting accordingly because we're playing this game. This is not your game. This is the game of the designers and the players are the players of the designers and GM is the referee. They are here to not provide friction between these two uh, groups of people who are looking to enjoy themselves. And that I'm wondering if the feedback and responses, particularly from, because I think it's GMs more than players who are going to be looking at this content and this material, giving them feedback and constant and a deluge of pressure to say, well, what if I don't want to have somebody feed the berserker on account this, of them being famous? That what is, if I don't do that? What you're touching on is the is the is the is, is the issue of being of wishy washy regard regarding um regarding setting as it's as written as written in rules. Uh, yeah, well, and, it's it's. That's, it's what I said. There's that, no real clarifying statement to make about it. It's 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 just what I said. I'm just saying. Now that that being that being said, um, I think it's high time we get into we get into the subclass hour. Time for the subclass power hour. <laughs> so, I'll start. I'll start at the top. Um. Because the bar the bard starting out didn't get a whole lot of subclasses, about as many as the druid did. But as time has gone on, it's gotten it's gotten some good ones. A deluge. Um. So, first is College of Valor. College of Valor. I'm going to give this one a thumbs, a hearty thumbs up, on account of the fact that hey, this has a maneuver system. Yeah, this game has a maneuver system available to all martial classes, and the College of Valor is basically a martial class. So, I can see it. In fact, I can see it leaning into because because there's this question about when you're playing a College of Valor, it's like, well, I kind of just feel like a, a fighter that has some. I feel like a, a I feel like a bard. I don't feel like a martial character, but I feel like a bard who had extra attack uh, tacked on, if you will. But in this system, they don't really have to do something like, all right, we're going to attack on extra attack. They could do something like, well, choose a set of maneuvers. Whenever you use a... Whenever you make an attack, you get to use a maneuver along with it. Or maybe you do have extra attack, but you could sacrifice an attack in order to prepare a maneuver or attach a maneuver to your first attack. Uh, there, are, there are different... They seem to be able... These guys are obviously willing to experiment. So they could have something which made this bard feel more like a warrior that had access to spellcasting, that had access to bardic magic, which is cool because I like anything which is thematic. I like anything evocative. I like anything which allows you to use the abilities, the, the mechanics and the narrative in tandem with one another. And of course, I have an affection for anything that goes back to the roots of the game as written. Um. At, at, or as it originated. So thumbs up. College of Lore. Uh, thumbs up because it's it's just the best subclass that's been devised to date. It's very easy. It leans into all the bard's proficiencies, namely that it's the best at modifying the various capabilities of both party members and adversaries at any given moment in time, and having access to an expanded spell list and having access to uh, cutting words is the perfect expression of that. There's literally no way it could go wrong unless they didn't use the abilities, unless they didn't use the abilities from 5th edition. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's here's the question. Is college, of, is college of Lore already in this class? Because under Bardic College, there are four things mentioned. Sure, we should go to that. Mm -hmm. Min Minstrel, Mountebank, Warchanter, and Lore Master. I think I think it is in there. 
Which does bring the, I, I guess we should note the other ones, Minstrel, Mountebank, or Warchanter. Warchanter, we could think of which that might be. It's probably going to be the, it's probably going to be College of Valor mm -hmm. uh, analog. Mountebank is interesting because the Cloak of the Mountain, yeah, check out the GM Word of the Week episode on the word Mountebank because it was on the Cloak of the Mountebank and the origin of the word, of course. And uh, Mountebanks are basically con men, grifters, if you will. That's an interesting. That's an interesting selection for a subclass, but it fits. And then minstrel. That's going to be your. I anticipate that's going to be your run of the mill person who uses a lot of uh, bardic inspiration. What do you know? Yeah, so Mount, for for anyone who who hasn't watched his uh, GM Word of the Week regarding Mountebank, the specific route. Is someone who stands on a stage and sells quack medicines? Yeah, or on a bench. That was a that was an interesting. It, it go it goes from like you know literally soap like a soapbox con man. Yeah, it's a snake oil salesman. Yeah, it's that'll be interesting. That will be interesting to see. I'm the con. That's there's your diplomancer right there. The mountain bank will be your diplomancer. Mm -hmm. A lot of these would be a lot easier to evaluate, I feel, if they had an example subclass to go with. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Um, Seriously, I, th I think it would be I think showing us, like, hey, are subclasses going to have... I'm better able to evaluate exploration acts if, for example, I know if you get a... Like, what if, what if some subclasses get a unique exploration act? And you could tell me that not all of them, if you include an example, you could tell me that not all of them do. But you could just include a note in the playtest document about like, hey, by the way, some of the ranger subclasses get bonus exploration acts. And uh, they, they could specify whether or not they're unique. Or they could specify whether or not they're, some of them are just, you know, uh, things that you're going to get on this list. Because if you tell me that in advance, I'm better able to evaluate it. But until then, I'm kind of in this wandering space where I might be more inclined, as we've witnessed across the past few weeks, I might be more inclined to give something a positive rating if it exists in some nebulous space where it might be more useful than it potentially ever will be, as expressed in the game. But I'm imagining some circumstance in which it might be cool, which is a, a an issue with 5th edition itself. Mm -hmm. Um. Next is Glamour Bards. Um, uh, sup? I like anything that has to do with Feywild. I like anything that has to do with elves, of course. Uh, but thumbs up because it focuses on a lot of charm abilities. All the same reason, you know. Also, all the positive references I gave earlier about going back to the game's roots, especially AD&D. Uh, God, that charm ability was... Uh, the charm abilities you had access to were killer. I'm still asking... Still waiting on Jeffro to, to answer me back about, like, wait, how would how might this work in a chainmail battle, for instance? Imagine just pacifying an entire unit of uh, mounted... of, uh, you know, mounted spearmen or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, By virtue of casting a, casting a spell, that'd be... <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Uh, great fit for the domain game, and I'm sure that they would be able to express. Uh, I think that the if there's going to be social strata, abil strata ability, surely they have to make it to that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let's hope, um, but don't call don't call me Shirley. <laughs> that was bad, monk. Yes, it was. I still had to do it. Um, College of Whispers. College of Whispers. I'm going to put this in, thumbs in the middle because College of Whispers is is a uh, weird. Um, if I do, if I recall, somebody on the dev team admitted that Dark Sun was um, in, was an inspiration for this. So that's I that alone earns it a thumbs up. Are we sure that this no, won't be part? Not. Are we sure no. that this won't be part of a? Uh, uh, well, I mean, the fact that they've got psionic powers. Never mind. I was going to say, for, just from the the description, the Mountebank could be part of the College of Whispers, 
extortion Possibly. threats and, and conning. I don't. I don't know. That's the thing is it. It inhabits a weird space within fifth, edi fifth edition, where it has some social abilities and it has some combat abilities, and they're they're sort of mixed into each other, but they're done in such a way that it's not clear how they might be used or come up in a game, except in rare instances, and they're kind of like maybe like throwaway abilities, but they're like thematically really cool, like the idea that you kill somebody and you temporarily take their identity. That's a cool ability. The fact it's extremely temporary and there's no way to, to to extend it, despite the fact that you're a resource based class is something something of a nuisance. Uh, the fact that a lot of the combat focus features are relegated to expend resource to do extra damage are somewhat disappointing. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give it a thumbs in the middle. There's a lot of mining opportunity there. But in order to make it a fitting and full part of this system, I think that it's going to require more work on the part of the devs, because as far as I could tell, there was not much work done on it to begin with. All right. Um, College of Swords. I'm guessing this one's either thumbs in the middle or thumbs down. I'll give it a thumbs in the middle. This is actually something of the inspiration, if I may be permitted to use a pun. For my issues with Bardic Inspiration and features which drained it too quickly was the various Bardic flourishes that you would be able to use as a bard, basically maneuvers, were like, oh, this is draining my class feature as a bard to perform what are basically maneuvers. If I really wanted this, I could multi-class and a fighter. Or any other class now that gave me something akin to maneuvers or, or special abilities on upon hitting things. And it wouldn't really be out of the wouldn't really be out of the question. Uh it's yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a thumbs in the middle because like it, again there's an opportunity to mine some of the things that actually no thumbs down because they they've already fulfilled most of the niches anything that they would mine from this is probably already in their maneuver system college of swords was just an attempt to sort of redo uh college of valor and make it a little bit more martial uh really uh, another pass at the idea of a troubadour warrior which i don't think went terribly well College of Swords comes off to me as a as a poor man's battlemaster, up until fourteenth level. Yeah, which I mean, nobody plays up to fourteenth level anyway. So there, there you have a lot of people's hesitation at playing it when they're more mechanically minded or mechanically um, conscious, if you will. College of Eloquence. College of Eloquence. Uh, is this from Tasha's? It's from Tasha's if I recall. Um, it first show it first showed up in U in UA Bard and Paladin. It might be it might be from Tasha's. I'm not sure. A lot of the this seems to happen often. Uh, describe some of the abilities to me. Okay, let me let me open that one up. Um, College of Eloquence starts off starts off with um. With the universal speech and soothing words features, um, universal speech, expend one expend one bardic inspiration. Ro when you do roll the die, choose a number of creatures within sixty feet of you that you can you can see equal to the roll for ten minutes. The chosen creatures can magically understand you regardless of language. Soothing words, um, you can cast calm emotions without expending a spell slot. A number of times equal to your charisma modifier. Yeah, so this is in uh, this is in Tasha's. Um, I have. I'm, I'm going to put this as a thumbs down. It's there's not even much there to. There's not even much there to mine. Like I feel like they build a subclass around like, oh, what if what if there was some way for you to keep your bardic inspiration die even if you used it, and they made a condition for that, and they're like. Well, we can't just give this to bards. We have to make a subclass around it now. 
because we invented a cool ability, so now we need to make a subclass around it there that justifies its existence. And if that subclass ability, if that ability is too cool, then that means, uh, or maybe not even intentionally, maybe it's just, just we we invented a single ability, and now we've determined that we need to that we can't just give it to all bards because we have no mechanism for doing that because we didn't. We at Wizards of the Coast never future proof our games ever. So now we're going to make a subclass. So that means that naturally all the a lot of the other stuff is just going to be filler. Uh, pop unfailing inspiration somewhere in the bard class. Make it a class feed. I don't care. Put it somewhere in the bard. Uh, and probably ignore the rest of the uh, the majority. of Actually, the 14th level ability is basically a follow-up on that feature. You can put that in. You can put that in there. Um, College of Creation. College of Creation. God, this was a weird one. Uh, kind of, like, simultaneously cool. But a little bit of a weird one, as something I that, that I feel like cre I feel like I feel like creation was the was there specifically for bards who were getting butt mad at artificers. I don't see why they would be getting butt mad. It was more like uh, it was more like the typical bards have a, of course, a long and proud history of of taking from other classes. So at some point, grabbing grabbing a bard that was a little bit more construct focus was was just sort of natural, I think. I think so. I think this has a lot of potential, uh, and it, this will be a pun, I suppose, because if I'm reading out something from Tasha's, yet third level college feature a mode of potential. When you ever, whenever you give a creature a bardic inspiration, you can utter a note from the song of creation to create a tiny mote of potential. It orbits around the creature, like within five feet. It's intangible, whatever. Um, whenever you use the bardic inspiration die, you basically get a uh, an additional effect based on whether or not the be die benefits an ability check, an attack roll, or saving throw, which is really cool. I'm not going to go into those specifically, um, but. You also have you also get performance of creation. You could channel the magic of the song to create a non-magical item of your choice in a space. Uh, it has to be has to be able to support it. it has a G, uh, gold piece limit, which is based on your level. Uh, and it uh, here it doesn't really have a lot more to it, but it's just it, it's just these creation focused abilities, which are I'm. It, I have to evaluate this first because I have not played it. I'm not entirely familiar with it, but it's just the idea of being able to conjure things, focusing in on the on the song of creation as as sort of an inspiration for your subclass features writ large, and furthermore, giving you a, a loadout of abilities is is cool. I think this is at least thumbs in the middle. It might be thumbs up. There's a lot in here that could be used. Especially for exploration acts or social strata abilities that all bards should have access to. And then there's other things which pr would probably do well as their own subclass. Like giving you artificer like abilities should probably be contained within its own subclass by and large. By and large. Mm -hmm. So I'll give it a thumbs up. I mean, there's just, there's so much stuff to mine in there. And I don't know if it can be mined. To construct its own subclass entirely, uh, without the de designers doing a lot of work, which might give it a which would be qualified, which would qualify it as a thumbs in the middle. But the abilities themselves are each so individually interesting to me uh, that I am excited about that thumbs in the middle, which is generally speaking not the case. Generally speaking, thumbs in the middle is something I'm apathetic about, but I am excited about this particular thumbs in the middle, I suppose. So yeah, my final answer: thumbs in the middle, uh, but excitedly, with with great expectations. Yeah. I think overall, we we um, I can definitely I can definitely say that I I like a good I like a good amount of what of what this um iteration of the bard is presenting. Um, I do th I do think that if there's any if there's any class that needs that that needs that narrative escalation that I that I ranted about for five minutes, it would be the bard. It's the it's the one class that is ta that is tailor made and gift wrapped for that kind of thing. Yeah, 
and while the while the bardic legend that we have in there is nice, and I'm pretty sure there's um, going to be additional benefits for the bardic legend in the teens. Um, that's just one, that's just one feature. Um, what I do, I do I do think that the that the big t that the big takeaway is going to is going to be the um the bar the um battle him and how and which is just, which is giving other options to the use of bardic inspiration that isn't going to be tied to your um subclass. Um, but I think the big takeaway from this is it's there seems to be the hint there seems to be hints of the spe of the spell list not being a not being a note for note copy of the vanilla spell list. That is interesting to me. Mm hmm. Um, chew on that one for a moment. But next, but we are, we are not done with our little with our little tour through um ca through casting. In fa in fact, bit of a spoiler warning: the next few weeks are all going to be casting classes of some manner. Oh jeez. Yeah, the the next three weeks, um, it's oops, all casters. Um, <laughs> Some, now one of one of them is technically a half caster, which we, which we will get which we will get to eventually, assu assuming um, no monkey wrenches get thro get thrown into the mix. But that should do it for this week. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>